yeah. than that intellectual level of insight that, you know, you remember that interaction with Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster there mm-hmm. at the prison yeah. with the bars, well, I guess the, the glass separating them and just this back and forth that they're having. And she's trying to dig in to find where this killer has yeah. this, this girl captured and, and he knows, but he's making her work for it. And yeah. just that, that's an intensity of, it's almost an intellectual intensity mm-hmm. that is really interesting to me. Yeah. That's a and that's very a, formidable. That's, that's very formidable. Yeah. yeah. Did you, do you ever feel like um, that you have, that Satan is that, that, that you have an enemy that is playing that level of a chess game? You know? Yeah, I do. I have, and I've learned to have a childlike faith in it now. Yeah. But for me, especially earlier in my kind of uh, learning uh, to be a pastor, and um, there were two places where this played out. I could probably give you both. One is just in writing messages and preaching mm. that I know that there's uh, every single time I feel like I'm working through content, I know that there's something really important to be shared. And sometimes it is so hard to unearth it. Mm-hmm. And I know it's there. Mm-hmm. And I will work, and my friends will tell you, I will spend 20, 30 hours. I will rewrite it on Saturday night. Like I am, I will not stand up on a Sunday morning, if at all costs. Hopefully I will never have to, but maybe. <laughs> but I refuse to stand up on a Sunday morning without having dug deep enough to find that intellectual kind of twist that's intriguing and compelling and interesting. Mm-hmm. Like it's worth hearing. It's worth it's worth coming to church for and dealing with the traffic and sitting in crowd. Like it's worth it, right? <laughs> so there there's that part of me that that I do feel is daunting at times and you feel I mean gosh, if I I could count up not even on two hands how many times sitting in in here, especially on a Friday, you know, when our whole staff yeah. is off, but I'm never off on Friday and I'm working, yeah. especially on content. And 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 it, it when I just find myself almost falling to my knees going, I just, I'm not good enough to do this. Yeah. Like I'm not smart enough. I can't yeah. figure this out. Yeah. Like this is too boring. This is too basic. Everybody knows this. This isn't interesting. There's that. I do think that's a, a, a mental game that Satan plays with me a lot. Yeah. It sounds um, like it. Yeah. And then you just fall into sort of a, yeah, a childlike, yeah. Um, I'm done here. Yes. Here, you which, know? which, which leads you in preaching to then you become more concerned about what people are going to think about you as you preach. than you're concerned about what God's going to do through you as you preach. Mm. What a tor- terrible place to be exactly on a platform where yeah. you're, you're preaching so that people think you're smart, mm. not preaching so that God can do something in someone's heart. That's strong. Regardless of you. That's strong. Yeah. So it's, that's a hard thing that I have that to deal is with. hard, yeah. The other side of it is just being a pastor, walking through difficult situations with people where you, I mean, I'll never forget the first time I walked into a home to meet a 15-year-old who um, had cancer. And, you know, and, and every other person can walk into that room and, and kind of be quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and everybody says, well, I don't know what to say. And that's okay because you don't have to say anything. When you're the pastor... Mm. somebody's going to ask you to say something and somebody's going to ask you mm. um, how they should process this or what they should do with it. And so walking in feeling completely in a, kind of unequipped to deal with that and not knowing what to do and just feeling afraid mm-hmm. that to, that because you just don't want to mess it up, mm-hmm. you know, and you don't want to pray for healing yeah. and then a person not be healed and then they question God. Yeah. It's like, you know, I just don't want to be, someone's yeah. question for God, you know? Yeah. And so those, those are moments that I've obviously seven years in, I've learned to navigate a little better, but, um, but those are moments where I feel like, um, to your question early on, yeah. you know, I just, that Satan could get in yeah. and start playing this chess game with your yeah, mind. Yeah. And you just, you become so afraid. Mm-hmm. So yeah. That's good. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Yeah. It's good. Cause I think, uh, giving people a picture of, a pastor and what they have to deal with for Sunday morning, what they have to deal with, uh, you know, Monday through uh, Saturday with the people that they run into and have to deal with the situations. I think that's great. And and the picture that you've given us today is just beautiful. Just this, I don't think I've ever seen this, and it, it's just wonderful to dive into. It's just this concept of fear and how it's a healthy thing, uh, you know, in, in an instance and yet it's an unhealthy thing when it, yeah. it when it just you start drowning in it and how it drives us to love you know god's love is like we're the little kid running into our dad's room you know and and at the same time it it, it drives us to this child like uh nature which you've shown us in in our films too 
Um, last question, and uh, it's one that I ask of everyone, so don't, don't feel like uh, you're being the only one singled out. <laughs> Great. Uh, so you have a new profession, and it is as a Chippendale dancer. Okay. All right. And uh, you have to choose a name. You've obviously not seen me with my shirt off, so yeah. <laughs> okay. So you have to choose one of your titles of your top ten uh, movies to be your Chippendale dancer name. So, oh, gosh. So, you know, when the MC gets on the mic and they announce you as the Chippendale dancer, they give you this name. Uh, uh, which one would you pick? I always thought you were supposed to take your first pet's name and your first street you lived on to make that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Furby Thornhedge. <laughs> okay. Um, well, this is easy. Yeah. It doesn't have is to be really? Napoleon Dynamite? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I thought you were going to go for Braveheart. I right? thought that, too. That was yeah. my first instinct. Then I thought, no, come on. Dynamite? Yeah. Who doesn't want to do the Chippendale Dynamite? Although, the Holy Grail. Yeah. It, it, it could easily go now, on. Now, the know, people in the crowd would... Would, 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 would nickname me Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but, Please. Please. Yeah. Put that away. Yeah. Let's be quiet. Visual but, silence. We need it. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's good. Now, if I was really good, the Sixth Sense would work. But I'm not that <laughs> proud of myself. So I'd go with Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. Very nice. Well, thank you, Gavin, so much for uh, being with us today. Sure. And, uh, giving us uh, such a great perspective on your top ten. Thanks for joining us for Real Conversations. If you happen to be in the Atlanta area and would like to explore what your top 10 movies say about you, you can get real by going to realexperiences.com and book an experience. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Real by Art Within.